Hey everybody, I'm Brian from BrianKeyFitness.com. Here are five fat loss tips that you might not have thought of. When it comes to fat loss, it's a very straightforward process. You get into a calorie deficit so that you can tap into the fat stores in your body and use that for fuel versus the food that you're eating. And as straightforward as that is, sometimes it's not that easy to apply. And I've covered this on other videos, in different books and in different programs. But if you're already doing that, here are six more things that might be beneficial when you're trying to get into that calorie deficit to lose body fat. Number one, increase the intensity of your workouts with finishers. So a finisher is effectively a mini workout at the end of your session. It's something that would replace traditional cardio. So if you find yourself jumping on a cross trainer for 15 minutes or walking incline on a treadmill trying to get your body fat levels down, this might be worth substituting as an alternative. So a finisher is as it sounds. You add it to the end of your workout and it can come in lots of different shapes and forms. You can use something like a bodyweight finisher, which might be 60 seconds of mountain climbers, 60 seconds of squats, repeated five times. Or you could do a weighted finisher, something like a dumbbell row and a military press and start climbing down your repetitions where you do 10 reps of rows, 10 reps of presses, nine reps of rows, nine reps of presses, all the way down to one. Things that mix up your training so you don't get bored. And finishers can work in a variety of different ways to potentially help you burn more calories. When it comes to weight training, cardio and fat loss, they work in different ways. Cardio elevates your heart rate and you normally burn more calories during the actual session and that can support a calorie deficit, helping you lose body fat. Weight or resistance training, on the other hand, tears muscle fibers down and as a result, your metabolic rate has to go up, which means that you burn more calories while you rest. The analogy I use here for weight training is like making money while you sleep you continually burn calories while you're resting. It's the name, increase your resting metabolic rate or increasing your metabolism. What finishers do is they combine the two. You're either using your body weight or some form of resistance training in the form of TRX, kettlebells, dumbbells, or barbells. And you're working with very short rest periods so that you're mimicking what you would do in something like a high intensity interval training or hit cardio session. So you're getting the best from both worlds. Check out my BKF online program or my social media content for examples of more finishers. Number two, Eat whole foods, especially if you're in a calorie deficit. A massive misconception people have is they think calorie deficit equals hungry. Calorie deficit doesn't equal hungry. A calorie deficit and low nutrient food equals hungry. If you're eating lots of whole foods, especially fruits and vegetables that have a lot of fiber, you're going to feel fuller and you're not going to get randomly hungry throughout the day. If you're in a calorie deficit on a fat loss plan and you're walking around with low energy levels and high levels of hunger, that's your food choices that are determining how you feel. So look at your food choices and stick with whole foods, complex carbs, healthy fats, complete proteins, fruits and vegetables, all in a calorie control plan to help you hit your fat loss goal. Point number three, make sure you're getting enough sleep. One element that's often overlooked when it comes to fat loss is sleep quality. Generally, when we think fat loss, we normally think of our food first or potentially workouts first or a combination of the two and we can neglect sleep but sleep is right up there with nutrition and training, if not above them. If you're getting poor quality sleep, this is gonna make it so much harder to stick to a calorie deficit nutritional plan. One, your energy levels are lower, so you're more likely to reach out for foods that are going to increase that energy level, i.e. sugars, carbohydrates, etc. And you're also gonna get a down regulation of the hormones that are gonna support satiety and hunger that come with a lack of sleep. Ghrelin, your hunger hormone, that becomes downregulated with poor sleep, meaning that you're feeling hungry a lot more than you would on a normal day. Leptin, your satiety hormone, it's the hormone that tells your brain that you're full. This becomes downregulated when you're not sleeping well also, which means that even though you're eating good quality meals, you're not feeling satiated at the end. That comes down to your sleep quality. Add this with lower movement throughout the day because you're feeling tired and you have a recipe for fat gain. So focus on high quality sleep. How much you need will vary person to person. Some need seven hours, some need eight, some need nine hours plus. So experiment and find what works best for you. And if you need a sleep routine and different sleep supplements, maybe go check out some of the sleep podcasts I've done on the Brian Keen podcast. Point number four, use fat loss supplements that won't make you rebound. Fat loss supplements are a little bit of a catch-22. Some of the over-the-counter fat burners you can get work tremendously well for fat loss. I'm not going to say that they don't. They will suppress appetite, so you eat less. They will increase energy levels, so you move more. But they'll also lead to a rebound, meaning that once you come off them, your appetite will go up and your energy levels will go down. And your fat levels will go back up with it. So for the most part, I'm not a fan of the high stimulated fat burners that you can buy over the counter. That being said, there are some that I do like. Green tea extract being one. Look for a green tea extract that has a 45% or higher ECGC compound, which will help elevate your metabolism throughout the day, meaning you'll burn more calories as you move around. 
L-carnitin tartrate or psilocyl L-carnitin, other great examples of a fat burner that won't have you rebound when you stop using it. Carnitin will help push fat cells into the mitochondria to be burned for fuel, so it will further support fat loss goals and won't have you crashing when you come off it. So when it comes to fat loss supplements, look at the ones that are going to enhance and support your nutritional plan that won't have you rebounding when you stop taking them, such as the ones I've mentioned. Point number five, have a set start date and a target finish date. Fat loss is a goal. Fat loss in six weeks or six months is a plan. When it comes to fat loss, make sure that you're working towards a specific end date. I'm also a believer that fat loss shouldn't be your goal for 10 years. Even if your starting point is morbidly obese and very overweight, you're going to change and switch goals as you progress in your journey. You're going to try and get stronger, maybe get fitter, or have some alternative goal that you're working towards. If you've been dieting for the last five years or the last 10 years, you're not doing it right. There's a problem with your process, there's a problem with your plan, or there's a problem somewhere with what you're doing. But working on a fat loss goal for six weeks or even six months based on your starting point and having the definitive end date is a very highly motivating thing to do when it comes to staying on plan. So what I would generally advise is set a future date where you're trying to hit your goal by. It might be a wedding, it might be a festival, it might be an event in the future, or just some arbitrary number that you've picked that you want to look a certain way by the specific date. That will one, keep you motivated towards that date. Two, help keep you focused when you fall off track so you can reset and go again because you're still working towards that end date in the future. I couldn't be a bigger believer when it comes to setting micro goals and macro goals when it comes to a fat loss target. Otherwise, it's too difficult to stay motivated to stay on plan. So if you've ever uttered the words, oh, I'm just not feeling motivated, that's because you're not working towards a target date. Motivation is horseshit when it comes to fat loss. It's about what you consistently do over time that determines your results. Motivation is just the way you feel. It will ebb and flow on certain days. Some days you'll feel motivated, some days you won't. It's about what you consistently do over time that's going to determine your results. So set a plan, set a target date in the future that you want to hit your goal by and work towards that. So there you have it, five fat loss tips you may not have thought of. Let me know what your thoughts were in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe, hit that like button for videos coming each and every week.